Hello, welcome to my channel. Um, I thought today I'd do something a bit different. Uh, I'm going to give you a little bit of insight into how I've managed to publish um, so many short stories uh, in the last, I think, 90 days. I've had something like 12, well, 11 stories accepted uh, for publication in 12 different outlets. And um, this, is, this has not come easy, I have to say, but I do think it's not, you know, if you follow certain simple steps, um, it can be achieved um, relatively easily. So I will tell you how to do this. Roll up the sleeves. Uh, basically, there are 12... Let me get rid of this. This is a rather strange uh, blow-up mattress thing. Let's just chuck that out of the way. It's kind of annoying me. Right. <laughs> there are 12 steps that you have to take in order to achieve um, publishing that many stories that quickly. Um, the first rule is pretty simple you have to write a lot. What I mean by that is you have to write most days. Um, you know, try or maybe just aim for two or three stories a week. Uh, they don't have to be very long. This is where we keep on to come on to the second thing. Um, but uh, just to finish that point, if you're short of inspiration, there are a number of ways to um, come up with an idea for a story. Uh, you can take a walk and observe, you know, something interesting in your environment, maybe listen to some conversations that people are having in public places. Um, what I do as well is it's slightly unusual. I've talked about it in, an, in another video, um, which I'll hopefully link to, to below. below. Uh, but I take random words assigned from an um, online random word generator, and I sort of look at those words and come up with a strategy of... Um, you know, what they suggest and uh, whether it's an image or a character or a situation and then sort of go from there. But my second point is keep them short. Um, there are a lot of publications that publish flash fiction. That's usually under a thousand words. And there's even more that publish um, short stories up to about 2,500. And that allows them to publish a larger number of um, printed pieces per issue or if they're online it allows it to fill you know two or three screens and not involve too much scrolling and it's just about the right length for someone to read and if they've got five or ten minutes to spare on public transport or at lunch break or something um, it's also around about the minimum length you need to tell a meaningful story with a character and some development a bit of conflict uh, perhaps even a three-act structure if you're lucky so, um, yeah, 1,000 to 2,500 is pretty good. Uh, you'll just be expanding the markets that you have available by doing so. Third thing, don't worry about the prestige of the publication. Um, this might seem counterintuitive, but think how much harder it's going to be to get into the New York Times or Ambit or uh, Granta or something than it is to get into a uh, smaller, more niche publication or website um, you're trying to build up a portfolio, a, a publication history, so that when you go to get an agent or get a, publish, a book deal of some sort, you can say, well, I've had all of these stories published. Um, that doesn't mean to say that you just go for any old thing. I mean, do visit the website first or, you know, do have a look at the guidelines, have a look at um, the kind of thing they publish to make sure it's in line with what you publish and also with your principles if there are um, you know, moral or political qualms about being published in a certain publication. But that still allows you a huge amount of freedom. So I honestly don't bother looking up circulations or, you know, how many issues they've published or anything like that. I just look at the kind of thing they publish. Um, I just check out what kind of magazine they are. Is it well designed? I read maybe the first few paragraphs of a few other stories to see what kind of thing they publish um, and then I choose the story to send to them um, based on, on an analysis of you know what the kind of thing they like. Other thing is if you write short, very short flash pieces like a thousand words, quite a few of those magazines will allow you to send um, up to five in one submission, which obviously maximizes your chances of, of um, you know pushing through the crowd and getting something noticed. So, this comes on to point four. Don't spend a fortune doing it. Um, there are quite a lot of magazines that charge an application fee. 
or a, they'll call it a, an administration fee or something. Three to five dollars is kind of common. Um, I do a little bit of that, but I try to keep it to a minimum. There are so many publications that don't require any sort of fee. And uh, even just focusing on those, you will build up your chances of um, publication. Certainly, I wouldn't bother with anything like expedited response or paying $20 for some feedback. It's, you know, uh, I suppose if it's a particularly prestigious publication or you know the editor is someone that you, whose opinion you respect, then maybe you want some feedback from them. But I don't know why you'd want feedback from a random stranger that, um, of whom you know very little. Uh, you'd be better off to, to give your story to three trusted friends who have enough knowledge of who you are and the kind of thing you write and get some feedback from them. Hopefully that won't cost you more than a, a drink or a, uh, a meal out sometime. But um, yeah, you don't need to spend a fortune. Point five, write in multiple genres. Um, try your hand at different kinds of story. Don't just stick to, I don't know, psychological thrillers or comedies or um, try not to sort of get yourself in too much of a niche as a literary fiction writer. Um, there are many, many publications. They all have different editorial policies. They all have different things they like and dislike. And you need to make sure that your work stands out. And obviously you maximise your marketplace by writing for all diff in all different kinds of genre. Now I do that, I'm not doing it in a conscious sort of... Um, cynical way. I, I genuinely love stories that are horror or science fiction or literary fiction or um, I don't write too many comic pieces, maybe one or two uh, sort of satirical things now and again, a few experimental bits. Um, and actually when I look at what's been the 12 things I'm having published or have had published, um, actually I'm going to put a list of the publications, the stories that have been published so far are So those pieces are very, very different. Um, and if I look at the 12 pieces that are being published um, this side of 2021, there's experimental stuff. There's a long supernatural story. Uh, there's some very, very short micro flash pieces. Um, there's some literary fiction. There's some science fiction. Yeah, there, there's really no, there's no linking theme um, to what's been successful because I've spread my net as wide as possible. So, to point six. Um, if there are briefs, um, if there's a magazine doing a special edition, say a Halloween edition, um, that'll be quite current. Uh, there'll be a, quite a lot of them at the moment. Um, either, that's a, well, that's a good opportunity to send your ghost stories, your horror fiction. Um, but if there's other things like, um, I was inspired by one um, quite niche literary magazine called Diagram. They had a thing, no, it's not Diagram, sorry. It's La Piculetta Barca. I think that's what it's called. They, um, they have a thing where they have a little inspirational piece of text or photograph or even a video clip or something. And they allow writers to sort of interpret that in various ways. I came up, they had one which was the main, the last menu of the Titanic on the day that it crashed into the iceberg. And um, I decided I would write something kind of political, quite sort of anti-Donald Trump. Um, and it was based on the, um, the cheese selection on that menu, using each cheese as an, as an acrostic, turning it, you know, using the letters of camembert, for example, to create the the words of the of the next phrase of the, the piece. It's more. It's really more of a poem or a prose poem or something. Uh, one of the more experimental things I've done. And uh, they like that. And you know, had had I not encountered that particular brief in that particular uh, literary magazine, I wouldn't have written that piece. That's for sure. But obviously, um, if you think of it in terms of numbers, there probably are going to be less entries to a very tight specified brief, then there will be a general open call for submissions. So if you just um, do a few of those sort of things that are written specifically uh, to a target brief, if they're rejected, you can still submit them elsewhere. You know, nobody needs to know the obscure point of origin of your inspiration. Yes, um, point number seven, 
Um, use submission managers. Um, I use Submittable. I think it's probably the best known and most popular. It has umpteen thousand literary magazines on there. It lists them by uh, whether they have um, like a closing date for specific um, calls for uh, entries or comp competitions or just they have windows of submission. They, they'll list the deadline that you have to send your story in by. Or you can arrange it by the ones that have no fee, which is very useful. And you can look, put in um, keywords. So I always put short story or fiction or something to take out all those magazines that are sort of design or photography magazines or something like that. Uh, it's very quick. Once you've put your address and basic details in there, it will fill that in for you. Um, yeah, it just makes things so much quicker. I can sort of spend uh, an hour and submit to 10 or 12 magazines. So do that. Um, number eight, keep a tally of what you need. To, this is absolutely essential. You need to do this. Uh, you need to keep a tally. I will just show you. Well, I'll show you properly on screen, but I have a spreadsheet. A lovely spreadsheet. A lovely spreadsheet here of about, I've got 200, um, 200 applications that I've sent out so far since I think June or something like that. Um, May, I think, yeah. Uh, I don't have that many columns. It's basically the magazine or website, the name of the story, or if it's multiple stories, the names, I put the list, uh, I name all the stories. The date that I sent it, by what means I sent it, whether it went through submissible, submittable, or whether it was emailed directly to the editor, or whether they use their own um, proprietorial submission form. The result, obviously, whether it was rejected or whether it was accepted or whether I had to withdraw it. Because here's the thing, most magazines will allow you to submit to multiple magazines, but you should tell them in advance that you're doing that. And obviously, you absolutely need to tell, if anything's accepted by one magazine, you absolutely need to go and tell the other magazines that it's been accepted. Um, and finally, any notes such as whether there was a fee, um, if it was for a competition, um, I'll put this magazine sci-fi and fantasy only. Yeah, that kind of thing. This is essential and I can order it by the title of the magazine or the story. Not really so much the story because a lot of them have sent multiple stories to you at once. But I make sure everything goes on there and then I I make sure I've, got, I've found out what's happening with as many as possible. Some magazines will just never get back to you. They just never will. Um, you can send them a little, after maybe three months, you can send them a little prompt, but I guess sometimes the emails are lost in transit or they just never, just don't bother to respond, to be honest. Just don't worry about it. Move on. <laughs> um, so this brings, that brings you to my next point, which is you've got to get really blasé about rejection. Um, you've just got to not care. Don't take it personally. Uh, if there's any feedback, you know, by all means, incorporate changes if you think they're good ones in the next draft. Um, and if they say anything like, um, you know, we, we enjoyed reading your work and we'd like to see more, take a note of that because you should follow that up with an, another story. Maybe wait a couple of months, two or three months and send another story. Um, but really, there's no point in sort of getting demoralized by multiple rejections. It's just what's going to happen. To, to, it doesn't matter if you're Hemingway or JK Rowling, you're going to get like, I think my ratio is something like 12, no, maybe not even 12%, like 8% success or less to 92% rejection. So I still think that's a good, a good ratio. Um, and this brings me on to my next point, which is what I call exponential uh, my exponential rejection strategy, um, or ERS for short. That's probably not the best acronym I could have come up with. Anyway, um, what I do is very simple. When I get one rejection, I send out at least two more submissions. So what that means is rejections are actually fueling a greater chance of success. Uh, and it means that I never have less submissions out there than I have uh, stories rejected. So at the moment, I think I've got something like 78 live applications for publication. And I've 
the last few days I think I've had a couple of rejections so I'll probably try and send out four or five tomorrow maybe I'll send out four or five um, stories to new, new publications or ones I've already submitted to um, and then that always gives me so many options that when I get a rejection I'm just like yeah move on sooner or later odds on if you've got any talent there's you know there's there's a finite amount of talent out there people will notice eventually and also once you've been published a few times you can start putting listing some of those not all but some of those publications in your uh, little biography they also want a small biography so just put something like my stories have been previously been published in do 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 xyz um it shouldn't have any impact but i think it might have an impact if they're sort of humming and hawing to know that you know you are are already a published author with six or seven credits however many you have to your name and of course you've got to make sure that you list everything on your tally sheet um, as soon as you've sent it the second you've pressed send put it on the sheet put it on the spreadsheet okay so two more points the first thing is it's kind of obvious, but always pay close attention to um, submission guidelines, everything, really down, right down to point size. Um, what I've noticed is if, if you want to make it as simple as possible, write everything in Times New Roman, 12 point, double spaced, one inch margins, no spaces between the paragraphs, but one indent at the beginning of each paragraph, apart from the first, just the title on the top. You can put a page number and keep your name off it. <laughs> that, that seems to be the formula that works best for everyone. But there are some very specific requirements for certain magazines, so you just got to check uh, that they don't want anything unusual from you. Um, and just follow that through. There's no point sending a 4,000 word story to a magazine that only wants flash fiction of 1,000 words. There's no point sending a sci-fi story to a magazine that says, we do not publish science fiction. It doesn't matter how good it is. They're just not going to do it. They're just not going to do it. You know, you can have the argument with them another day about why they don't publish science fiction. Why wouldn't you? Yeah. Um, and finally, and I think I've covered some of this, but it's worth reiterating. Follow up any leads you get from friends, from other pe other writers, um, things that pop into your inbox, submission deadlines that appear. And, and follow up any submissions to any suggestions by editors to resubmit. So if they say, we love the story, but um, there was these, we didn't quite like the ending if it had gone this way. You know, if you agree that, that that alteration improves the story, then do it. And if they say, we'd love to see something more from you, send them something else. Not immediately, uh, but do it again. And, um, and enjoy the process. Don't make it work. Uh, make sure that you write when you want to write, that you enjoy each story you write, that you feel you've given it your all. And uh, point 13 out of 12, <laughs> obviously, revise, revise, revise. Um, the, I, tend, I try to write flash fiction of a thousand words, so that inevitably means that I'm cutting and cutting and cutting and cutting. And that's honing the story and making it as sort of um, fat-free as possible. But even if I'm writing regardless of length, I'll go through it three or four, five, six, seven, eight times before I send it anywhere. And then once it gets rejected a number of times, maybe three or four times, I'll maybe look at it again because there might be something that's putting people off um, or it just sucks. You know, every so often you can write a story that's rubbish. This is life. You will get better. The more you do, the more you will get better. So this is, for what it's worth, that's my... Um, Tuppence, halfpenny of uh, uh, the simple rules to um, have your stories published in as mag many magazines as possible in as short a time as possible. And uh, hopefully, um, at some point, I'll be able to tell you that this has borne some kind of fruit, like I have an agent or a book deal, or somebody wants to publish a collection. Um, but for the moment, I'm quite happy to get, you know, every couple of weeks, I get a, an acceptance from another magazine. And then that's something to look forward to. Um, always put it on, you know, put it on social media. Tell people your success stories. Um, it encourages them if they're also writers, and you know, it makes 
this everyone likes a, a piece of good news, <laughs> you know, uh, given how much horribly depressing nonsense is available in social media these days. It's good to get something that's just good um, appearing in your feed. So those are my uh, little tips. I hope it was helpful. And if it is, please share, maybe subscribe to the channel, perhaps even listen to some of my stories. And um, I'll see you again soon. Goodbye.